Uh, today we're going to today we're going to be uh, discussing nurse leader hiring retention and retention at Memorial Regional Hospital South. Uh, my name is Imana Buzaid, and I'm an MD by background. I've been in healthcare technology for the last ten years of my career. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Incredible Health, the fastest growing career marketplace for permanent healthcare workers. Incredible Health is the only platform that allows hospitals to hire permanent, experienced nurses in 20 days or less. We flipped the script where hospitals apply to nurses instead of the other way around. Um, joining us today is Shelly Delphin, uh, Chief Nursing Officer at Memorial Regional Hospital South in Hollywood, Florida. Shelly has been with Memorial Healthcare System for over 30 years. She leads the system's collaboration and best practice council and serves as the CNO champion for the Nurse Manager Practice Council. Welcome, Shel Shelly. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, so in our uh, agenda today, so just a reminder to everybody on the call, this is, an, uh, this is designed to be an interactive discussion. So if you have questions, uh, please feel free to submit them in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. We do have time allocated, allocated at the end. Um, we, we do have time allocated at the end to address uh, your questions as well. And this webinar is recorded, and so a member of the Incredible Health team will be in touch with all the with all attendees uh, with the recording too. All right. So today we're going to be covering uh, the state of the nurse labor market. We're going to be covering uh, the importance of nurse manager retention, the strategies for how to drive nurse manager retention. Um, how Incredible Health uh, helps hospitals and health systems, and then we've got time at the end for Q and A. All right, uh, so let me just do a very quick, brief market overview, just to set the scene here, so we're all on the same page with what's going on in the market. Um, our demand for healthcare as a country continues to increase, uh, and because our population is aging. But the workers in healthcare have not kept up with that. The supply of workers have not kept up with that demand. Healthcare became the number one employment sector in the US in 2018 by number of workers and by dollars spent on the workers. Uh, but we have not done a great job as a country overall of increasing the supply of workers to meet, to meet that demand. Um, that is resulting in multiple problems. Uh, one is that we're on track to be 1 million nurses short by the end of next year. The, Average annual acute care nurse turnover in the country right now is at 27%. It's had a very large increase in the last two years uh, of turnover. In, uh, in Florida specifically, it's about 26% right now. Uh, uh, labor is a percentage of revenue continues to increase. So that means our labor costs are continuing to increase. And that's not just from premium labor, but that's even the, even the, the, uh, the wages of our permanent um, healthcare workforce as well is also increasing. And then the average time to hire it right now is at 87 days. That's the average time to hire a permanent and specialized nurse, which is, which is a very long time. Um, also just wanted to share uh, some data just from our, from our platform. When nurses are signing up uh, for Incredible Health, we have about 12% of US nurses signed up on our platform. We often ask, you know, why, why, are, you leaving, why are you leaving your job or what are you reconsidering? And uh, by far the top reason is career advancement. I'm looking to advance my career and that could be a range of things. It could include things like cross-training. It could mean specializing further in their current field. It could mean moving into management. Um, the second most common reason that's selected is look, and looking for uh, more flexible schedules or a stronger work-life balance. Uh, the third is something to do with geography. Uh, either they're trying to reduce their commute time or relocating. And then the fourth is higher pay. It is in this order that by far the most selected are the top two, career advancement and looking for more flexible schedules. And so we work with many uh, nursing leaders and HR leaders across the country that are putting together strategies and tactics that address these top, these top um, areas. You know, more, more training programs, for example, career advancement for flexible schedules, they're adding more flow pools, we're adding, they're adding uh, more shift options and, and, and so on to, to attract more nurses and to retain them too. All right, so let's turn over to um, to, to, to Shelly. So um, Shelly, your focus at Memorial Regional Hospital has been on nurse leader retention. Could you just share with us, like, why is nurse leader retention so important? Absolutely. Thanks, Simon, and thanks to everybody for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about this nurse leader retention that we're focused on in the Memorial Healthcare System. 
as Iman had said, um, I am the chief nursing officer at Memorial Regional Hospital South, which is one of our hospitals in the Memorial Healthcare System. But we are a very large system um, of about 14,000 nurses. And um, retention is one of the key imperatives for us right now. I lead the, as part of our nursing strategic plan, I lead the collaboration and best practices team. And through that team, um, we developed a nurse manager peer group. And we did this even, this was pre-pandemic, but the pandemic has really allowed us the opportunity to really look at some strategies that would improve nursing retention. And through looking at some of the evidence, we were able to um, identify not new information probably for anybody on the phone, but nurse managers are essential for nurse leader, or I'm sorry, for nursing retention. So we chose to take a look at this strategy because as everybody knows, high functioning nurse managers are essential to the success of, of your organization's mission and objective. And they do have a direct correlation to nursing retention. Um, historically, they have, you know, the nurse leader provides stability to their unit and the ability to produce outstanding outcomes. But exhaustion, burnout, and poor life balance have been cited as the top reasons for a nurse manager intent to leave. And that was pretty much the impetus for us to look at developing a strategy through use of the nurse manager peer group to retain nurse managers. Um, there's just a couple of statistics that are up on the slide that I wanted to talk to because nationally, um, this, is, this is an issue for all organizations as well as ours. The American Organization of Nursing Leaders recently did a longitudinal study, and that's where um, these statistics came from. Study was done in 2021 to 2022, and they cited that replacing a nurse manager costs about $80,000. And that doesn't even take into consideration the amount of high performing staff that will follow that nurse manager once they leave. So from a financial standpoint, there's a big impact to nurse nurse manager turnover. 45% um, of the nurse managers that were surveyed in this, in this longitudinal study cited that despite all the efforts that are going on, they still have intent to leave their current role. They cited burnout, exhaustion, and poor work-life balance as the reasons that they were still considering leaving. But what was even a little more striking to me as a nurse leader um, is that 47% less than, I'm sorry, 47% of those nurse managers reported that they were emotionally healthy. So it, it is imperative that organizational leaders, particularly nursing leaders, assess and implement strategies that'll help us retain our nurse leaders. Okay, so turn, turning now to Memorial Regional Hospital, South specifically in the work, the work that you've done, um, what are what are the strategies that you've you've put together to to retain your nurse leaders? So our our goal in the Memorial Healthcare System and as part of the nursing strategic plan is to provide a healthy shared governance approach to leadership to nursing leadership, and we had started that like I said pre pandemic. Um, this nurse manager peer group um, has done a lot of work. They, um, they were really developed in 2019. Um, we were having some problems recruiting nurse managers, just um, did an assessment, did a focus group, and talked to the present nurse managers and some of the next level middle managers, clinical managers, assistant nurse managers about why the role of the nurse manager was not attractive and why we were having some problems um, recruiting. Uh, for the nurse manager position. And they shared that they needed more support. Um, there, there were gaps in onboarding. Um, there were gaps in competencies. So this nurse manager peer group was developed across the system and it has representation from each facility and what they do is they meet with their nurse manager peer groups at their hospitals to develop a, a priority or develop some of the things that they need to work on. And some of them are listed here. Um, they wanted to, they wanted more structured onboarding programs. 
They wanted to develop their competencies using evidence rather than just history. <clears throat> they wanted to look at work-life blend, which meant flexible work schedules or a flexible work environment, and really assessing and looking at creating a healthy work environment, which, which I know all organizations are looking at trying to do. Mm -hmm. And then for the for the um, there were already all, <clears throat> there were already multiple programs available for nurse managers, right? Could you just highlight a little bit more, like what was um, was there like a, a problem or challenge with the existing programs? Were they not enough? Yeah. I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I think what when they did when this peer group did the assessment in 2019, there were existing um, programs. There were leader uh, like leader development programs. There wasn't really anything specific to nursing, to nursing leadership. So okay. they were challenged with identifying where the gaps were and then creating and developing using evidence-based um, research programs that they thought or competencies that they felt would fill these gaps. And they set up a whole structure where they, you know, when, when they would go to the, lit, they would go to the research or the literature and develop the competencies. Then that goes next to the director of nursing group, to the CNOs, and then um, when they require executive staff sign off, our chief nurse executive is our voice, is the voice for that nursing leadership group at the executive table. And that's, that's kind of the prioritization and the way that we get these programs or these competencies or these implementations approved through exec staffs. Okay, so as a result of some of this work, um, you created a nurse manager peer group, like formalized it or established it. Is Correct. that is that still in existence today? It is, okay. it is. It, it was born as a nurse manager peer group. Um, and then throughout the last three years, they've evolved into a nurse manager council to stay current with professional govern governance and structures, um, shared governance structures. Okay, so question that, you know, I, I know is going to come up in the q and I might as well just ask it, is, you know, this all this happened since 2019. Obviously, from 2019 till today has been an extremely busy and challenging time for nurse leaders and for nurse managers. How were the nurse managers able to dedicate themselves to like their, their work with their teams, plus tackling the challenges with COVID and rolling out these programs that you described uh, to help retain nurse managers? Yep. That's a great question. And um, fully being fully honest and transparent, um, it has not been easy to keep them in 2018, 2019 and the development phases, it had great momentum and was going. Yeah. And then of course, 2020 came and you know exploded. Um, there is and always has been an organizational and nursing leadership commitment to this group. However, during the pandemic, there were times when the group didn't meet for a couple of months and they just weren't able to do anything. And, you know, the COVID experience across our system was different in every hospital. Everybody had a COVID experience. It just wasn't the same experience in every hospital. So there were some leaders in some facilities. They kept communication. It wasn't always by meeting. It wasn't always by um, you know, sometimes it was just a text group where if something was happening in one facility, another facility might be able to help out. So it did become less formal during 2020, particularly, and then into 2021. And then um, I think it was the, I think it was in the winter of 2020 headed into 2021 that as a system with our HR partners, we um, were acutely aware that we nurse managers were just back to burning out. I mean, they were talking about a flexible work schedule. They were talking about all these programs, but they just didn't have the time or the energy to do any of it. So we did pull together a focus group and tried to help them um, reprioritize. We didn't only focus on the nurse manager peer group. We pulled some nurse managers who weren't involved or hadn't been involved in the peer group development and then pulled some middle managers as well to say, Here's where we were, here's where we are, where do we need to go in the future? And we did reprioritize um, and kind of look at how we were gonna 
how could we continue to do this? But the organizational support always remains. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had a different chief nurse executive. Um, she has since retired, Maggie Hansen. Few people might be familiar with her. And she really was um, committed to the growth of, of nursing leaders. And so we did have, we do have organizational support. You know, we, we kind of had to slow down a little bit, but yeah. we did continue to move forward. Okay, so um, to summarize, like the, the result of uh, this peer group <clears throat> was quite a lot of programming, which is awesome, right? Um, you had structured onboarding programs. You, def you ended up defining the competencies for each role. You assessed all the nursing leaders to understand what the competency gaps were. Um, you offered more flexible schedules. And then finally, you involve them in creating a, a healthier and safer work environment. I'd love to next go through some detail here, because uh, I know there's going to be many on the call that are like, you know, thinking about putting these programs together themselves. So let's talk about the competencies first. Like, how, how did you, can you walk me through um, the competencies Memorial Healthcare ended up establishing for nurse managers? Sure. So we had um, leader competencies that we were using and the peer group um, took a look at that competency and then use the AONL nurse leader competencies to fill in the nursing leadership gaps that weren't present in the leadership competency. Um, did a lot of research and looked at what are the, you know, what are the most, what are considered the most important competencies for nurse managers. And, and we did use this one particular um, article in research that uh, was identified that showed that the communication competency of nurse leaders um, when assessed and then when developed, um, they were able to show that different communication styles are predictors of staff and nurse manager job satisfaction and turnover intention. Okay. So that was one of the keys. And, and you know, you can't you can't always change somebody's communication style, um, but it can you can do a self-assessment and they did do some self-assessments. Now they weren't able to look at every nurse leader across the system. So that's kind of a facility specific uh, thing that we'll be doing moving forward. But in general, they looked at the research and said, transformational or supportive lead, comp, leadership and communication styles tend to retain staff or show better communication with frontline staff, staff following those, those type of leadership styles will decrease turnover. Okay. So that was the way that they did the assessment of competency and then a self-assessment of themselves again, now, it wasn't considered mandatory, um, but these are nurse leaders that are looking for growth, directors of nursing and chief nursing officers that are looking for that type of leadership style. So it just gave us some information to use as we're hiring new nurse managers as well. So we did um, give them some tools to use, um, stoplight reports, the way to hold staff meetings, listening tours, things like that. So those type of things are tools that we gave to them. And then the competency that was developed utilized the AONL guidelines. And then we did use for the first time um, in July of this past year, that competency assessment and the directors of nursing fill it out, um, fill out, you know, complete that competency for their nurse managers. Okay. Um, so why, by the way, just a reminder to everybody who's, who's on the webinar, please feel free to submit your questions. We'll try, we'll get through as many of them as we can. Um, well, you know, you, you mentioned the research and, and how important the communication is. Uh, uh, can you just help us unpack, like, why is communication such an important skill for nurse managers to master? Like, what kind of impact does it end up having? You know, the nurse manager position, and I don't know how many people on the phone have been a nurse manager, but I was a nurse manager in um, in the early 2000s for 12 years. Not a lot of people are still nurse managers after 12 years, but I, I remember, you know, this isn't, this isn't new. Um, you, as a nurse manager, receive 
information that needs to be shared from above and below your your um, with your team and then from your senior leadership and the way that that communication is put forward to the staff you know outcomes patient outcomes staff outcomes are all usually contingent on being able to communicate effectively and appropriately and so um, developing Developing that communication skill is something that this particular nurse manager peer group felt like was important, especially highlighted during the um, pandemic when communication was, you know, things were changing daily or weekly or hourly sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, if it's somebody who struggles with being able to effectively disseminate communication, um, these are things that we found would be helpful in the literature, use of stoplight reports, mid-shift huddles, things like that, where um, you pull everybody together quick, you get across the communication. And it sounds very easy. And for skilled communicators, it is easy. But for people who, who haven't developed that skill, it isn't quite as easy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a question from Rachel Chavez that came in is, how did you assess the gaps in competency? It sounds like there was a self-assessment initially. And then now it's a little bit more, even more formalized. You use the AONL guidelines. Correct. There's a sort of a, a assessment of the of the leaders. Correct? correct. And we and yeah. and we always utilize. We have historically in the healthcare system utilized a uh, 360 type um, mm -hmm. assessment style self a self assessment as well as for your peers and uh, from your peers. And a lot of that um, is is gathered through that. Um, but we really, the nurse manager peer group really counts on each facility to keep that going. You know, they're not that they're not responsible to um, a, to to assess that in a new nurse manager. That would be the nursing leadership team at that hospital. Got it. Okay. Um, question from Blaze Hirsch is who is who leads the nurse manager practice council and what's the cadence of the meetings now? The nurse manager. Council is led by two nurse managers from two different hospitals um, I, across the system. There is representation, two from each of the six hospitals. So it's a group of about 13 of them. And then they have a reporting structure to my collaboration and best practices. They meet monthly. Sometimes, depending on what they're working on, they may meet twice a month. One may be a working meeting, and then one may be a reporting meeting. And um, I'm the CNO liaison, so they report to my collaboration and best practices group. We then bring anything from there that needs to go up to the CNO level, to our CNO executive team, and then to our chief nurse exec. Okay. Awesome. So uh, how are you how are you making sure that these skills are being taught and practiced on an ongoing basis? So um, it is that's the, the, the constant communication um, feedback circle through. We do keep it as a standing agenda item on our CNO meeting agenda mm -hmm. so that anything that's happening at the nurse manager council that needs attention or discussion or approval is discussed at the chief at the CNO meeting. What we do is we have them come and present to the CNO. So it's not me talking to the other CNOs. All of these implementations, if you will, have all been done, <clears throat> have all been brought to the CNO group um, for approval through the nurse manager council. Okay. And, and then we feed that back down. So it comes through collaboration and best practices. Two, if there's something that the CNOs want to look at. Um, I'll give you a little uh, inside information. We're looking at our leadership structure right now. We presently have nurse managers um, who have, they all have different scopes. Some might have 36 bed units, some might have 20 bed units. Um, they want to right now look at the scope, the span of control for nurse managers and who reports to them. We don't have an assistant nurse manager model right now but they want, this nurse manager council wants to do the work at looking at that, taking a look into the research and evidence, what produces better outcomes, and then they'll present that up to us. Okay, and then when it came to, comes to like rolling out some of these programs uh, to, to, to the, you know, the 
quote unquote, frontline nurse managers, right? What was the role of the HR team? We, <clears throat> this nurse manager council has, um, has an ad hoc, ad hoc human resources and organizational development member on the team. Yeah. They don't attend to every meeting. They only attend when needed, but it's, it's, that's, it's a very collaborative relationship with, with HR and OD. Anytime anything's going to impact people, we make sure that we bring in our HR partners. Okay. So they, they collaborated with your team to create, to upgrade the onboarding for nurse managers, to upgrade the skills training. They did. Yes. They were part okay. because, yeah, we needed the input. We also included finance um, in certain aspects because some nurse leaders are very financially savvy and some are not. And so that was another onboarding piece that um, they had said that they wanted. And so we, we got with our finance partners to make sure that they had that. Okay. Um, so the, ne the next topic is, is just the burnout, the, the, the work-life balance. I mentioned earlier how the second most common reason why nurses leave, nurses of all levels, of all generations leave, is, is something to do with their schedule, right? And the desire for more flexible scheduling. Um, I, curious, curious why, um, what impact the nurse manager council and this work has had on nurse manager scheduling? So this was a big one. And this was one that they actually brought out when we had the focus group during the pandemic. They had started to look a little bit at flexible schedules before, but they really started to focus on this one um, when we met in 2020, 2021. They were developing it. Um, again, they, there are other places in the country not many in healthcare that have looked at this for their leaders, a flexible work schedule, um, your 40 hours, just get yeah. or get your hours in. We don't care when you do them as long as you're producing good outcomes. And so they went to the research and came back with a couple of options. And they did do a nurse manager survey. And they also did a survey of the RN staff to ask, you know, what they felt, what they would feel, how the staff would feel. It wasn't, we didn't use an evidence-based tool. We did a homegrown kind of survey monkey thing. Looking back, that's one of the lessons that we thought next time we would have chosen to use more of a, more of a, a, a reliable tool um, that's out there. Because what we're finding now, so they presented two options to the chief nursing officers um, one was a 40 hour flexible work week with the option to do four tens to make sure that they had engaged with their night staff and, and most of the nurse managers wanted that the additional, um, day off during the week. And then they also have presented a, still a five day work week with a one work from home day, you know, the option to get a lot of that administrative work done without, um, the interruptions, the constant yep. interruptions of the day. Um, more, there was more support for the 40 out for the flexible work option. So that's the one that that they started to use. I would think I would say um, se about 70% did participate. Then we had another surge. And so it kind of fell apart. Mm -hmm. um, it did come back over the last probably four or five months, but we just had a meeting last week and they want to revisit this. Um, I know a lot of, I was at a, I was at a um, consortium last week and there's a lot of other hospitals that have implemented this for their nursing leaders as well. And they're finding some of the same things that we do. The nurse managers are sharing that Sometimes that additional day off isn't necessarily working for them because then they come back and they have a hundred more emails, 15 more incident reports and all that to catch up on. And so they're not finding more balance. They're at, they, they are actually feeling like maybe having the one work from home day is better because that would just allow them a little more flexibility in their schedule but they wouldn't feel like they were behind. So we're, we are in the process of reassessing what we were doing and seeing what else is out there and what we can learn from and maybe try again. 
Yeah. Um, we did not resurvey. Uh, we we feel like it's probably about 50-50 right now. Probably 50% of the nurse managers are using it when they can. Mm -hmm. um, we're not 100% that it has improved the work-life blend. Okay. So we want to go back, take a look, and see how we can better meet their needs. Okay. Um, and, you know, the, the question of budget often comes up. Some of these programs that you've described require additional budget. Some are budget neutral. I mean, some are even save money, right? So um, just curious how, how you were able to get the financial aspects of this approved and, and how you thought through it. You know, interestingly enough, they're really in, in the flexible scheduling option for nurse managers, we did have to do some work with payroll and with finance to just, you know, show how we were going to, the, actually the, just the logistics of putting in the day so it doesn't screw up the payroll system. But there hasn't been a cost associated with most of these. Really, what we're looking at is the return on investment um, of nurse manager time that they're putting into this, um, improving outcomes and improving retention. So to say budgeting, we really haven't had to budget right. for any of these implementations so far. Again, it's more of a time, you know, it's yep. the, the time and, and just showing the impact on retention. Now we haven't we have had good nurse manager retention and that's we have had movement across the system like nurse manager role in one hospital to nurse manager role in another hospital or nurse manager promotion to a director of nursing. We haven't had a lot. Um, we Our retention has not dropped due to nurse managers leaving because they were unhappy. Okay, so that was actually my next question. Like what's what's been the impact of these programs that your teams have put in place? So we, the retention of the nurse managers was mm -hmm. one thing we were, we were looking at one of our key, one of our key performance indicators. We're also yeah. looking at staff retention mm -hmm. and, and our, we looked at employee engage, our employee engagement survey to see if leadership improved. And I can tell you from the 2021 employee engagement survey across the system to the 2022, we did see an increase in staff's um, perception of leadership engagement and, and satisfaction with their nurse leaders. So that was a good one um, as far as employee looking at employee engagement. On nurse managers, we, like I said, we've seen no, we haven't seen people leaving the nurse manager role either to leave our organization and go to another organization. We've seen some shifting of nurse managers, but staying in the nurse manager role. And we have been able to um, promote some clinical managers to nurse managers by highlighting the role and, and making it you know, more attractive through some of these implementations. All right, so on the topic of creating a safe work environment, um, what, what, what could, could you summarize for us like what your team's put in place to, to address this challenge? Sure. So the, collabor the collaboration and best practices team took a look at one of the, um, one of the hospitals in our system, actually our biggest hospital, implemented a code lavender and they did a lot of work on it um, in 2021. And then I think actually implemented it in August of this past year. And this is just, this is a program to create a safer, a, a healthier work environment. And there, we're, we're using them as a beta testing site. And once we, so the nurse manager, one of the nurse managers from that hospital did bring this as a wellness and and a healthy work environment initiative to the nurse manager council. So it talks, it looks at staff de-stressing after an incident and leave, you know, the nurse manager council is gonna look at how this works at that hospital and then implement that across our system as a um, healthy work environment imperative. Okay, um, well, that's awesome. Uh, and then there was something about code lavender. <laughs> yeah. That's the name yeah. of it. And it, it okay. It, Is that what's called? It, yeah. Yep. 
and that they use a lavender cart, they go up with lavender aromatherapy. Um, there's an, an actual algorithm as far as how to de-stress, how many times they meet after the incident. Um, it has shown some really good um, outcomes in other places. So we're just waiting to see, we wanna give it a little bit of time over um, at our level one trauma center and let them use it for a little bit. And then the nurse manager peer group will take and try to, and work on implementing it because each hospital in the system has a different personality like all organizations. And so we just wanna make sure that we roll it out effectively for each hospital. Okay, and so what's what's next for the nurse manager council? So the nurse manager council is staying actively involved in looking at best practices um, that they're in the research. One of their meet, you know, during their meeting, they will bring different things that have been implemented, trying to become innovative and you know, changing things that the way we look at things, um, looking at some of the sacred cows in nursing practice and yeah. how we can maybe change some of that work. Um, really focused on retention of not only themselves, but their staff. And so looking at all the retention efforts that are out there. Um, right now, I think their biggest project is span of control, span of, mm -hmm. of, of control and influence basically, and just trying to see what, um, what can produce the best outcomes for their staff, what can produce the best outcomes for themselves um, and their work and finding joy and passion back to the things that they want, what brought them to be nurse managers. And so span of control is a big one right now. So they are assessing across the system what our system looks like and how we can look at some um, look at some things that we could implement that could standardize, um, help help the nurse managers make a bigger impact on that. Yeah, okay. Um, Fantastic. Well, I mean, congrats on all the work and success so far. Thanks. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to come my, one of my final questions for you will be, uh, what's your top tips and advice for others who are implementing this? I'll just do a quick uh, overview of what incredible help is, and then we'll come back to answer that, answer that question. Um, this is a reminder to everybody, please feel free to continue to submit your, your, your questions and because we're going to have plenty of time for Q and A um, at the end. All right. So Incredible Health is, is a software company, and we're a career marketplace for healthcare workers. Hospitals, they use our custom matching technology to hire high-quality permanent nurses in less than 20 days. Um, we also, we work with over 500, 600 now hospitals and health systems across the country, including, um, including very large ones like Kaiser Permanente and HCA. We work with many academic medical centers too, like Johns Hopkins and Stanford and Cedar sinai and lots and lots of community hospitals as well. Um, we also, uh, there's, there's three unique aspects to, to what it is that we, um, to what it is that we do. Uh, first, the employers apply to the talent instead of the other way around. Second, we've automated a lot of the screening and the matching of the talent. And then finally, we provide a robust set of data analytics that nursing leaders and HR leaders can use to continue improving their internal processes with nurse of nurse hiring. Um, we also um, uh, play a role in, in nurse retention. So we, when we look at our studies, when, when nurses are hired through Incredible Health, the, the retention rate is about 15% higher than the, than the hospital's baseline. The reason for that is that they were, the nurse was able to consider multiple opportunities uh, and they were, it was a very well thought out job search before selecting that specific employer. Um, uh, we, we have a presence in over um, 27 states and, and work with many large health systems and uh, community hospitals and academic medical centers in those states. Uh, we're about to start with, with Memorial Health. We're very excited about that and have very large presence in Florida already uh, with HCA, with Tenet, um, with Advent Health and, many, and several others. All right, so um, nurses join our platform for a whole range of reasons. It's not just to use the hiring marketplace and find their permanent job. That We all also offer them a whole range of free tools and services. For example, um, they have access to free continuing education across the country, accredited in all 50 states, and that's available to every single nurse in the country. Um, we have free salary estimators. There's career coaching that they have, they have access to. We even have an exclusive social network for nurses inside our iOS and Android apps where they can ask each other questions and give each other advice. It's like a Quora for nurses. 
uh, and uh, lots of other resource, career related resources as well. Um, the, the other thing that we've learned um, as a company is just the importance of operational excellence in nurse hiring. Just want to share some data here with, with the group. 68% of nurses accept the very first offer they receive, uh, permanent nurse offer they receive. 61% of nurses accept the very first offer, even if the second or third offer has higher compensation. When we operate in, in many of the markets that we're in, in every market that we're in, whether it's the Miami area, which is where uh, Shelly is, or the, um, the Dallas area, the LA area, New York, so on, we, often it's the hospital and health system that has the strongest internal hiring operations that can get nurses through their hiring process the fastest that ends up hiring the most, um, more than the hospital or health system in that area that has a bigger brand or the hospital or health system that has the highest compensation. Uh, so the importance of speed and operational excellence is critical uh, for to be successful in 2022 or 2023 when it comes to hiring nurses, because this is a highly competitive um, environment that, that every hospital and health system is now operating in. Um, we also just track speed. You know, it's, it, it's critical. So this is a quick case study from one of the teams we work with. These are the different steps in the hiring process. We were really able to bring the days to fill down for this team from 66 days down to 19 days. And where we have, where Incredible Health has the biggest impact is actually on time to source. Um, and just finding that, you know, experienced nurse that's interested is, is the hardest piece sometimes. Um, this is a true collaboration. We work collaboratively with existing in-house talent acquisition teams. This is not outsourcing, this is not an RPO. Uh, we are long-term partners of the hospitals and health systems we work with and work collaboratively with the nursing leaders and the in-house talent acquisition team. Uh, we take care of the first four steps in the uh, hiring process, including sourcing, automating the screening, getting that first phone screen scheduled, and then the in-house talent acquisition team takes over at that point. They're completing the phone screens, getting hiring managers, interviews completed, getting offers out and accepted. This is a newer model in talent acquisition. You know, we talk a lot of, uh, Shelly was mentioning things like span of control and, you know, nurses needing to operate at the top of their license. We have, recruiters have to do that as well. Uh, and a recruiter operating at the top of their skill set means that they're spending the majority of their time speaking to talent or uh, engaging in building relationships with hiring managers. It is now time for technology to take off some of the administrative tasks off their plate, like thing, like sourcing, for example. And so this is definitely a newer model that's enabling hospitals and health systems to get more out of their HR or recruiting teams. All right, let's 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 do some Q&A. There's quite a few questions that have been submitted. Uh, before we dive in, Shelly, I did want to ask you that question of like, what 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 is your top advice, top tips uh, for others on the call that are sort of trying to drive improvements in nurse manager retention? Um, I would say the probably the first step would be to, and, and you may have already done it in, in your organizations, would be to um, get a focus group of nurse managers together to and listen um you know and i i think probably in every organization there is a, a nurse leader who is passionate about this um i happened to be in a dmp program when i was working with this group and i can tell you that all of my a lot of my colleagues that were in class with me were looking at nurse manager and nurse leader turnover and retention as their dmp projects so yeah. It is a hot, hot topic, and I think we all know that um, you know it's imperative to 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 our high performing teams in our organizations. So I would say uh, first step would be to do a focus group. Um, yeah. Where what do the nurse managers want? What do they need? What are the things that are keeping them up at night? Even though we think we know, it's always um, I always learn something when I listen, and then um, just established, you know, you have to have your executive and your organizational leaders support for, for this type of council. Yep. Um, and so I think that would be the net, well, first step would be to make sure that the organization has the appetite and I can't imagine that they wouldn't for this. And then, um, then just, just get it started. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, there were, there are a few questions being submitted about, uh, incredible health, you know, Danny's shared, uh, in the chat, um, a link to just request a time with our team. And we're ha happy to walk through walk you through more more detail as well. Um, all right, another question that has um, come up from um, from Michael Richardson. How do you, how do you maintain a level of accountability 
while balancing the retention of your nurse managers? Um, a level of accountability for the nurse managers. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think that that expectation is set at, it has to be set at each facility mm -hmm. and by each, you know, nurse leader that that those nurse managers report to. Um, but accountability is, is part of the competencies that, you know, sometimes need to be assessed and, and, and then fill in those gaps. But, um, typically when the nurse managers are looking for something like this, um, they understand their accountability. Okay. Um, and then a question from Susanna uh, is, do you have, uh, this is a very specific question, do you have a sample or example of self-assessment tools? Um, I do, I, uh, but I, they're also, you can just look in the literature. There is a AACN has a healthy work yeah. environment. Um, tool that you can that that's available we did not use like i said earlier we used more like a survey monkey not validated so yeah. i would recommend using um a validated tool another question uh, that came in is just like uh, just resources uh for for helping with this work you mentioned many of them throughout the webinar uh the aonl guidelines you just mentioned the aacn <laughs> healthy nurse environment just uh, wondering if you have other, you know, resources that you recommend uh, for 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 people to get get this information from too. Um, typically, we found most of ours uh, in the at Memorial through the AONL. We've used them a lot, and the AACN um, Journal of Nursing Administration has tons and tons of research and evidence that's yep. available. Um, again, it that's through AONL. Um, those are the, the primary ones that we've used here. I'm yep. sure there's tons more out there. Yeah. Um, question from Cortland Adams. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned several contributors to least nurse leader uh, turnover, but when we focus in specifically on the burnout challenge, what would you say is like the top contributor to nurse leader burnout? I... From what I know here with, with our team of nurse leaders, I would say it's been the, um, what's caused the burnout has just been the, the inability to balance and blend work life and home life. I mean, some, I heard somebody speak last week saying that we should stop using work-life balance and maybe start talking about work-life blend because balance sometimes makes people feel like they're off kilter and it doesn't usually help, um, but how to blend your work life and your home life and, and get some joy back. I think that they've lost, you know, a lot of the nurse leaders have just lost their passion. Yeah, absolutely. I know we didn't, uh dive too much into the nurse staff retention. Uh, but question from Ashley uh, Kayan is, do you or your team have any mentorship programs in place, you know, between the nurse managers and, the, and staff and their staff? Um, and, you know, or any other tactics for, you know, driving the retention of the staff, nursing staff? Organizationally, um, the Memorial Healthcare System has some mentor programs through, um, through our organizational development department. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we have not through the nurse manager council implemented any mentorship, but that's a great idea. All right, awesome. Um, cool, and then a question from Corlin Adams. You did review with us what you did for nurse manager scheduling. Uh, I think you, you'd mentioned um, adding more options. So four day, four day a week, 10 hour days and a right. day off. Uh, you also mentioned, um, five days a week and one day work from home. Uh, curious about, have you done anything different uh, with your frontline staff scheduling? We have a lot of things that we are trying to pilot with frontline staffing and scheduling. Um, yeah. We are just now creating um, an internal float pool that'll offer flexible shifts, um, trying to move away from the standard 12 hour shifts. Um, and again, you know, we've had some focus groups looking at what do nurses want as far as yeah. 
because that is, you know, in the beginning when we talked about six hour shifts or shared shifts, people, nurse managers get a little overwhelmed. You know, you only need two bodies in 24 hours. And now if you go to six hour shifts, you need four and we just don't have the bodies right now, but definitely looking at some flexible scheduling for our frontline staff. Okay. Um, I think those were all, like, those were all the questions. It's actually very rare that we get through all the questions. So <laughs> thank you for all the, con the concise answers, uh, Shelly. Um, just for, to, for everyone at, uh, on the, on the webinar, we a member of the Incredible Health team will be in touch to send to share the recording with you. Um, if you have additional questions that you come up with uh, even after this, you're welcome to email us at questions at incrediblehealth.com, and either our team or Shelly's team will be able to to respond to your questions. Um, and um, and then if if you want to find out any more information about Incredible Health, Danny has shared the link, and you're welcome to sign up for a demo or a time with our team. And just thank you so much, Shelly. Really appreciate your time. Um, we, I did want to share with the group, you know, we were talking, Shelly and I were talking right before the webinar started, and this is a very challenging time in healthcare. This is a very tough topic. I mean, retention of nurse managers is very tough, uh, but this is also a very hopeful time in healthcare. There's an enormous amount of executive attention on these challenges. Um, there's more resources available for these challenges that, and it's really, um, it's a great time to, 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 to be strategic and, and make some moves and make some decisions. Anything else thank you want to add, Shelley? No, I just want to thank everybody for the questions. And you gave me some ideas as well to bring to the nurse manager peer group. Um, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate Iman having me on to talk about this because um, it, it is a big deal. It, yes. And I think we are on, on it, you know, trying to move forward in a new normal. And so I appreciate it. So thanks for your time and everybody's time. All right. Thanks again for joining us, Shelley. Appreciate you.